Project 7, we're really going to start taking control of the style of our web page. I'm going to take a look at our page source. And in this particular one, we're first getting to use external style sheets. So you'll notice that I have a link here to project7.css. So I'm going to leave that open and view page source as well. So we're separating the content of the page with the design of the page. Let's start by looking at the page itself. I've done a couple of interesting things here. I have this background image, which is actually only, that's in the CSS, it's named background.gif. And I want you to actually see what we have here. And we can actually go and look at it by just typing in the address. And you'll see it's just one very small 10 pixel high band that is repeated from the top to the bottom of the page. I actually made that in Photoshop. I don't expect anybody else to do that because not everybody has the software to create a gradient. But I wanted to show you that typically a background image is something that's tiled. And I tend to do tiles like this, but you can also do square tiles. Square tiles are harder to do because they, it's harder to get them to blend. But you can see that that one image is repeated in o over and over, giving us a very smooth gradient on the page with a very small file to load. Let's look at some other things that we've got going on here. Let's start in the page itself. So obviously I'm making up a bunch of the stuff here. I have a picture I've used before, and you'll notice that this doesn't look quite right. That's because you'll notice that its dimensions should be 410 by 454, and I've skewed them. And this is one of the things you have to be careful of if you are resizing something. You want to keep it proportionate. Otherwise, you can see it'll look a little off like this does. I have the biography here, and then I have some text about me. And you'll notice that I've put in an image as my bullet. That's done using our cascading style sheet. I've done some styling on the mouse over colors for my links. Um, and I've also added some special styles in here. At the bottom, we have the fine print. Attempt to contact at your own risk. Mary is currently booked 28 hours a day, eight days a week. Um, you can see that I have some special classes that I've defined changing the colors here. Let's look at the CSS, and then we'll see how we pull it into the HTML. So in our style sheet, you typically start by declaring your character set, which in the United States is UTF-8. And this is just a comment saying it's a CSS document. I start by defining how my body, the main part of my page, is going to look. So I set the fonts for the entire page. Everything else will inherit. That's why it's called cascading. So if I don't redefine, which I did here in the H1 tag, you'll notice the H1 tags are a serif tag, meaning they have the little lines on them, where the rest of the page is a sans serif. That's pretty common. Typically, in paragraphs online, you want to use a sans serif. But in large headings, it's, they're so easy to read, it's OK to use a serif for those. So it, when I redefine it, it the one that's more specific wins. So since the body tag is a sans serif, but the H1 tag is more specific to the local H1, that one's going to win out, and it will redefine that font family. Then I have the background image, which I showed you, and the background repeat Y. That means it repeats up and down. It's like a graph. If we repeated the X, it would be repeating from side to side. You could do a gradient that way as well. I've redefined the link colors. So you can see here, that's my mouse over. I can click on it. I have an error in there, so I should have tested that better. But it shows you that it changes visited link. Let's see if I did that one right. Yep, that one works. And so you can see that it gives you a different color once they've been visited. So I defined 
unvisited, visited mouse over and selected, which you hardly see while it's clicking. Then I have the main content, which you'll notice this has a hash mark. I want you to look here and you'll see that an ID gets defined with a hash mark. Now, there's not a lot of difference between an ID and a class. The main difference is that an ID is an area that only exists once, where a class can be used over and over again. So if it's completely unique and will only be used once, that's the hashtag, so an ID. If you're going to use it multiple times, then you use the dot, highlight, which is our class. So you see I've redefined some tags. I've created some IDs. I've redefined the unordered list to give us an image. So we're using the bullet GIF. I've redefined or I've defined classes for highlight, smallish, and largest. Let's see where we're using those. So we can see that we have a horizontal rule. We have a div tag, which I have used the ID of main content. And you can see main content has a few things. It's changed the font size. Again, we've changed the font family here, and we have it floating to the left. That lets the picture float over here, and everything floats to the left. And then we have H3, class largish. And that's changing my biography right here. Then we have my image source, source and just a couple of paragraphs. Then we have our links. And YouTube doesn't work because I forgot the HTTP portion. And then you'll notice that my list items here, redefined with the bulleted list. Image, which we did right here with our list style image. And then we're calling in our class smallish. And that's here at the bottom with the contact at your own risk. And where we have the karate area here, that one is a class of, and you'll notice this is an inline style, which will override anything else. We're naming a span, which we can name a span as any part of any element. So I can put that right in the middle of the paragraph with the class of highlight. And so those are the classes that we're using. And you can see we have brought in our external style sheet to really change the appearance and let us take greater control over colors, backgrounds, images, and define classes and IDs to let us identify specific parts of our web page.